Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So um, I want to film another video for you guys, right? Hence why we're here, why we're watching. Um, and basically I wanted to do a look that I had done a while back. Um, I haven't done it on my channel, but it was on my Instagram. And it was just a fun, purpley, smoky look with um, a glittery based lid. So yeah, um, and I picked up um, a new foundation. It's been around for a while, but it's new for me. And it's the Becca Ultimate Coverage 24 Hour Foundation. Um, this is the color Buff. And um, one of the places that I order really quickly before we get started is Camera Ready Cosmetics. And I'm not sponsored to tell you that. I just really love um, their website because they have so many options of professional products for professional artists, whether it's for television makeup, whether it's going in your pro kit, whether it's weddings, um, airbrush makeup, special effects, they just really have a great variety of products. And um, now like it's just growing like crazy. They carry um, Danessa Myricks who I use. They carry uh, Mehron, Cinema Secrets, Ben Nye. I mean, you name it, they kind of have it. I think I saw Laura Mercier there. Um, not too long ago. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I am not sponsored to tell you that. I just wanted to share that and I will link it um, in the description down below because I'm always looking for places that I can purchase, especially during times like these where we can't go into a store. Um, and they do have skincare products as well. So awesome, awesome. So yeah, I want to get into it. I don't want to take too long today because I know that I tend to ramble on and I do have videos that can be longer than other YouTubers, but I want to start prepping my skin. So we'll kind of speed through this because I've been doing the same kind of routine lately using Beauty Blender Primer and then also Danessa Myrick's um, Illuminating Veil. So really quickly, if you guys aren't familiar with this foundation um, and you're just late to the game like me, this is um, said to be ultimate coverage in a surprisingly weightless and breathable creme. Perfectly balanced distribution of pigment and water at high concentrations allows the formula to adapt to all different skin types. Lightweight oil-free creates a second skin effect of undetectable, flexible coverage with a natural long wear finish. Woo! That's a lot, Neo. Um, what I did find interesting was 22% water adds hydration and an elastic finish to prevent pigments from settling into lines, dryness, or pores. Using one pump of foundation. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> you're going to sweep this across your face. Y'all know that pretty much none of us use one pump um, unless, of course, we want that no makeup makeup finish. What I love about this is the packaging. It's weighted, it's heavy, it's glass. Um, it's super sleek, pretty. It looks like it may be a little light for me. Um, however, I did get a little sample of it through Camera Ready Cosmetics, which I was talking about earlier. Um, and Camera Ready is great because you can get these small little sample sizes that come in like your dram jars here. So you can try out different foundations and I did like it. Um, so I'm gonna just warm it up with a creme bronzer and do it that way. But it's hard because I don't wanna go too dark with my foundations just because I don't try to intentionally get color. It just kind of happens sometimes, um, especially lately with the weather being in the 70s here and really nice. So right off the bat, when you pump this out, I like it. It's not super runny or anything, so it does have a bit of like a weightiness to it, like a fluff. And um, I don't know, it's very crummy, crummy. It's crummy, not crummy. Um, so we'll see, we shall see. I am smoothing this on with a Jaclyn Hill brush. This is the JH05, and I do like this brush because it's similar to one of my favorites, which is the Jeffree Star Foundation brush, but that can be very big. And sometimes I find when I work in a smaller area and I kind of work a little bit at a time, I get better coverage.
I'm dying to try the Becca primers. I've honestly never tried them. I've always used their highlighters and um, honestly, I don't think I've ever, yeah, I've never tried a primer of theirs, but I wanted to try, I think it's the Backlight Primer because um, I follow Jamie Genevieve and I love her so much and um, she was talking about how she just loves, loves, loves that primer and the smell and everything reminds her of like a lush scent and I'm like okay girl you sold me so you know I'm one of those people that when I watch a YouTube video if I'm really sold <laughs> by what the artist is saying I'm like okay click in my cart gonna buy it right now and that's basically what happened um with this foundation I think I want to say I was watching Desi Perkins like I've been going through and watching some older videos that either I've watched before but didn't really pay enough attention to or that I honestly like haven't watched because for a while there it was like everyone was posting new content. So I would sit there and be like, okay, I need to watch this, this, and this. And then honestly, life just kind of gets the best of you and then you can't, you don't have the time to go back. So I've been like doing that since we have all the time in the world now. And, um, just watching old content and watching Desi Perkins. And I know she has talked about Becca products a lot in the past. So I was like, let me, let me give this a shot. And, um, I liked it. I liked the sample. However, the day that I used the sample, I mixed it into another foundation cause I was worried the color wasn't going to work. And so I didn't really get the full benefit. And I find when you're trying products, you really want to make sure you go in and try it by itself. Even if you have to tweak some things to get the right color, because you want to know how that product performs with all your other favorites, like your skincare, your primers, everything. I'm going to use the Beauty Blender Concealer. And Really quickly, guys, I'm using my Soleil Tan de Chanel um, just to go in and warm up my complexion. And normally I use the Huda Beauty. I've been like really into that. But I was like, let me go ahead and use this one just because this is an OG favorite. And I feel like I want to know how this performs, um, the foundation performs with this kind of like gel based bronzer because I love this. quick little nose contour. If you guys want to see it more in depth, just go back to my previous videos. You'll kind of see my routine. So now I'm just going to take the Magic Star Concealer from Jeffree Star Cosmetics in C5. And this is a little bit light, but I like to bring this right down the edge up where I contour. Uh, in my nose. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit in the corner here just to brighten. And then I think I'm going to go a little bit up at the brow bone too. But I like to grab a little extra concealer just to really offset the contour. And now I'm going to go in with my Juno & Co sponge and blend out my concealer. quickly to get the inside corner I always go back to the original beauty blender just because I really like that very fine point that's on it I find it gets the inside corners of my eyes really well because you definitely want that nice and smooth before you go in and start setting your foundations but I do really like the beauty blender concealer I think it has really great coverage and I'm liking the way it's sitting with this foundation um, I've heard good things about Becca concealers too. So I'm kind of like, maybe I need to hop on board and try it. My biggest thing is like, I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm cheap. Like if I can get a reasonable concealer for like minimum 12 to $16 <laughs> and then if like maximum like 24 to 26, you know, if I can be within that range, I'm good. Um, and that's one of the reasons I love the Morphe concealer so much is because, you know, it's such an affordable concealer and it really does a great job in my opinion. Um, 
I know Morphe kind of gets dragged a lot on social media and I don't really know why, um, I guess to each their own, but I've never had a problem with their complexion products. I do think because they are fuller coverage and they are a little bit on the thicker side, you do have to just be very sparing and learn how to work with them. But I do find once you learn how to do that, um, you can really get some great, great coverage and at such a great affordable price. And that was definitely... Another thing that I loved about working there was being able to educate people on the complexion products. So I'm just using my um, Morphe Highlight Contour Sponge and I like to use the kind of rounded edge just to go in and set. I'm using RCMA No Color Powder, which is also a product you can get on Camera Ready Cosmetics. And I love it because this powder is like the OG um, I've used it for a long time and I know Jaclyn Hill swears by it too. And it's just a great product to set with. You can highlight with it if you want to. I like to use the Ben Nye, but um, it really does a great job setting like any kind of foundation. Now, so I think I'm just going to use my Morphe bronzer today for contour just because it really has a great amount of pigment and lasting power. Um, you do have to be careful and sparing with these because they're so pigmented, but this is Originator and it's a little bit deep for my skin, but I bought it that way because I know even without trying, I get color in the summer and um, it's hard because like I don't intentionally sit out there trying to bake anymore like I used to when I was younger and dumb, but um, yeah, even like using my protection, I have, um, which one did I buy? I think it was the Age Regenerous Neutrogena Sunscreen. And I've been using that daily. So hopefully that won't show as a white cast with my makeup today when I take pictures. But um, I haven't tested it yet to see how it looks under makeup. We shall see. Um, I usually use the um, Athelios from La Roche-Posay. But it is really expensive. To me it's expensive. I know some people will drop like... A hot dime on skin products um, but yeah it's 30 I think it's $33 or $34 on, at Target so I'm like yeah your girl's not trying to spend that picked up my like $6.99 Neutrogena and I like it because it's really gentle and it doesn't feel super heavy All right, so I'm just kind of taking a look um, just to look and see how the foundation is doing and I like it so far. It um, feels really comfortable even though it is a little bit thicker when it comes out of the bottle. Like it does feel really comfortable on my skin. I don't feel super heavy and like weighted how some foundations can feel. Um, so, so far so good and I do want to go ahead and prep my eyes for our eye look today. Um, to achieve the look, I'm going to be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina. This is volume one, I believe. And yeah, here's what it looks like. And I've used this before. It's super, super pigmented, really great variety of color in this palette. Definitely a purple color lover, um, purples and pinks. I call it my Barbie palette. And it's very similar in color stories to um, some of the Morphe palettes that I use. And it has that same pro quality pigmentation and lasting power. And to cut the crease today, I'm going to be using this MAC Dazzle Gloss Liquid um, Eyeshadow. This is the color stars in my eyes I love that and then to top that off for even more we're gonna use smoke show from ColourPop and I'm thinking about using starstruck this color right in the middle here but these little um, ColourPop pans are really really cute these nine pans and I have a couple of them and I just think they're great for the quality for the price point I think ColourPop really stepped it up with these because some of their like single shadows I've done in the past haven't been so hot but I like this one. So yeah, kudos, a color pop. So I'm gonna go in with this cute little brush from BH Cosmetics. This is a pink marble brush. And remember with these products, you wanna tap, tap, tap. P. Louise is an excellent product. However, people go in and they just kind of smear it across their lid and they're like, wow, it didn't stay. It's not that great. And it's like, no, you didn't put it on right, honey. 
Now, towards the outside corner, I do pull it up, like pull it a little bit because I don't really need as much coverage out here as I just want to create like a nice kind of winged out shape. But I'm still going to go in and press because I don't want to disturb any of the foundation that's on my face. So I'm just taking my little Morphe sponge and just going to pat, pat, pat making sure this is nice and smooth so that when we go in and start packing on shadows, it doesn't collect the shadow. If you go in too soon before your base dries down, shadow can sometimes roll and pill, and you definitely don't want that to happen. So this is a good time to go in and bake. If you don't bake, just give yourself a couple of minutes to chill, grab a cup of coffee, have a sip of water, and then go back to it. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of this Ben Nye Fair Powder and sprinkle that into my dish here. I swear, like, <laughs> it looks like I'm cooking. I'm, like, legitimately baking something over here because I have so much crap on my desk here. But anyway, moving on. I get sidetracked very easily. But I'm going to go and take this sponge now, and we're going to start a bacon. Just kind of follow my lower lash line to create a more defined line and then I press 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 under here so we have a nice amount of powder in case we have any fallout okay so really quickly I'm going to hop into my palette and using C1 which is a pure white pigment in the Anastasia palette I am just going to come in and press 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 in the inside corner and in the upper brow bone area all right, and the first color I wanna go into is actually a pink, and I want it to be a little bit brighter than the pink that is in here. So this is A5, I'm gonna mix A5 with C1. Obviously, you wanna make sure you take that pink pigment and lay it down first before you hop over into C1, or else you're gonna turn that white completely pink. But by doing this, when you mix the two, I'll show you on the back of my hand, it should be a brighter pink, and it just creates a nice, soft transition pink instead of going in with that super super hot pink magenta magenta I can talk today and I'm using this on that same fluffy brush because I want to really pull this color I'm actually going to come past the um the eyebrow here which usually I don't but I want to exaggerate this a bit Now we're going to put that brush away for a rainy day. <laughs> um, and we're going to go into a smaller brush to add a little bit more definition to the crease and also to add some more depth. So I am grabbing a 573 from Morphe and I'm going to go into the colors A2 and B1. So you have these two here. This has a little bit of warmth to it. This one here, we're getting slightly cooler. We're mixing the two, so it's kind of like a soft, like strawberry jelly. Strawberry, oh, maybe a little bit of grape in there. But it's like a pretty raspberry color. Raspberry jelly. <laughs> and I'm just bringing this in now to the crease, keeping it a little bit tighter and tapered. And then we're gonna start buffing upward into that magenta baby pink tone that we mixed together. This is one of those looks too, where you're gonna feel a little crazy. You're gonna feel like, um, oh my God, I'm like dating myself. You're gonna feel like Mimi from the Drew Carey show. And if you don't know who that is, Google it, cause you'll laugh. But <laughs> you're gonna feel like that until you kind of get down to the, the finished, you know, vibe of this look. Um, but yeah, it can be a little interesting. So yeah, let's drop down even further. We're going to go to a Morphe 433 brush and now we're going to add our A3 and B4. So we're going to be mixing this one here and this one here. Big fan of mixing. I find it just feels more custom that way and you get, you know, just your own little custom blend of eyeshadow. 
So using this brush, I wanna go in now and I'm gonna be really tight and tapered to the inside of the crease here. And I'm just pushing, pressing that color in. And then I'm gonna come around here and work it on the outside corner. And right now we're just pressing. Then I turn my brush sideways so that I can utilize more of that kind of fluffy tip of the brush. And I'm going to start circling now and buffing this color. And then when we want to blend, we kind of do like a windshield wiper stroke. And then you can even do short strokes like you're scrambling eggs. Now grabbing that B4, and I'm gonna grab a little bit of D4, which is actually a blue. I wanna deepen up that purple even further, and I'm still using that same 433, and I'm going to press this on the lid. And again, up into that crease. Then again, turn your brush to the side, utilize those kind of natural hair bristles and start working it in circles. Now using a 441, I'm going to go back into the color B1 and A2. So I have that kind of like grapey jam jelly raspberry tone. And I just wanna come into the inside portion of the lid here and then start working it over the darker colors just to create some blend and transition. And now you can see you have like a really dramatic look going on here. So to soften, I'm gonna go back into that first brush, the 533, and just take a little bit of that white, and we're gonna softly graze that across the top now. You really like need barely there with the white. You don't wanna go in heavy because if not, you're gonna to totally blend away all that hard work. You just want a very sheer amount of it. You can even use translucent powder, which is a really good trick just to go in and blend. And it's like we're barely touching the surface. We just wanna make sure that this whole area gets softened and blended. So now we're gonna backtrack a little bit. We're gonna grab a very small detail brush, like a pencil brush or a lip brush. This is the M149 from Morphe. I'm gonna grab D4, which is that blue, and B4, which is the darkest purple colors. And I wanna start working those underneath my lower lash line. So I'm gonna come in now and press. So following your lower lash line, just kind of drag it out a little bit. So I'm bringing that about three quarters of the way, um, just a little bit slightly past the halfway point. But I wanna create that depth. And again, you wanna bring this up into the wing here. Now I'm gonna take A2 and B4, two of the deeper purple shades. And I'm gonna grab that on a Sigma E30. And I'm gonna come over where we placed the blue purple and bring this all the way into the lower lash line corner. Now I'm going to grab B1 and A5 so that we have a little bit of this kind of like jam and then the hot pink magenta and this is really going to help brighten the lower lash line so we're doing that on a very small fluffy brush so grab any kind of small crease brush or fluff brush whatever you call it but it has to be nice and small to be able to get underneath the lower lash line and really help to smoke it out. So now you should start seeing the look really starting to kind of blend together. Um, the next thing I want to do is go back into a 441 and just blend the outside corner a little bit better so that it really blends and smokes out into that kind of winged liner we created. So now to intensify the lid because you know we're not drag enough yet. We need to go a little step higher. We're gonna grab that liquid shadow. So you can use a MAC liquid shadow, any type of um, glitter, anything fun that you wanna cut your crease with. And I'm just going to take this and dot a couple of dots on my lid. Using a Spectrum A16, I'm going to come in and press and start dispersing this liquid glitter. If you raise your eye, you can kind of see where the color transfers a bit. 
and that's kind of where you know you can bring it up to. Now using my finger, I'm just going to press it back and forth, the silver, just to kind of blend it into the darker color. Now before I go in with a darker color, I want to kind of set the glitter just to give it, like I said, that really va-va-voom finish. So I want to go into that smoky palette from ColourPop. This is Smoke Show. And we're going to grab the color Starstruck. And I'm going to actually do that with my finger, my ring finger. And this is a really super glittery pigment. And I want to press that into the Dazzle Shadow. And you see how it just amplifies it so you don't have as many gaps in the glitter. Now, the brush that we used for the outside corner should still have quite a bit of pigment. That's one thing about purple is that it really does stay in the brush. So with using what's left, we're just going to go in and pat, pat, pat and kind of work that across the outside corner. Just so we go back and forth, back and forth, and it just helps to really blend the outside corners and if you tilt your head back you can kind of see the top edge of where you place that silver just come in here intensify that and then the same way you go in with that brush that had the darker colors go in with the brush that had the softer pink so now you can come in and bring a little bit of that back into the picture to again just further blend and intensify the color. All right guys, so I did lie a little bit. I do actually have to go back into this palette. Um, and the reason is because I wanna grab this really soft lilac shimmer color, this A1, and I'm gonna use an E19 Morphe brush and just grab a little bit of that on that brush. And I wanna come right on the inside corner here and highlight with that lilac purple. Woo! Give yourselves a round of applause because that is over with. <laughs> All right, now we need to dust away this big honey. I'm going to grab my JH14 and a little bit more powder and flick very gently, guys, because remember you used some of those blues and those dark purples and you really don't want that stuff to stain. So now I'm going to take a little bit of my Morphe powder. This is just a finishing powder, filter four, and I'm going to use a JH, or excuse me, a JS2 brush, Jeffree Star. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of that powder, and I like to go in and really press this into the skin just to finish so that this way, if there is any bake left over, it just kind of relieves you a little bit so you know that it's covered with a tinted powder so that this way if there's any flash in your photography you are not going to appear super ghostly and white. Alright so now I need to warm up my cheeks a little bit so I'm going to use my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer and this R2 or excuse me R7 from Morphe. So since I have a lot of glow on the eyelids, and of course, you know, we have some glow on the cheeks now, I do want to kind of mattify underneath my eye, but still brighten. And one product I love for that is the Scott Barnes Press Powder. Um, this one, I think it's Petal One or something, I want to say, but it's really pretty, and these pop out really easy to put in, you know, Z palettes and stuff. But I'm going to use an R31 from Morphe and just press this powder along the sides of my nose and underneath my eye to give a really pretty brightening effect, but to still keep it a little bit matte so it doesn't take away from the eye. I'm actually going to go off camera now and do my eyeliner and mascara and all that jazz, but I will come together and do the lips with you guys and we will finish this look. So we have our eyeliner on and we have some mascara on. Um, for eyeliner, I use the Morphe Ink Liner and I will show you guys what that looks like. It is this really cute felt tip pen. Super affordable. I think it's like $10 or $12. I love, love, love this liner. And then for um, 
mascara i actually use the million lashes voluminous l'oreal that's like an og of mine um, but it really gives like a nice like lash effect and it's a good way to prime your lids before you put fake lashes on however i'm going to do that off camera but what i do want to do on camera is this look here um, with the lips i'm using sweetheart which is a really pretty neutral um taupey color from morphe cosmetics of course and then i'm going to use this really pretty holographic gloss to go on top so let's do that so that is like the perfect kind of nude punch of color and then i want to actually add a really pretty holographic gloss this is the la girl cosmetics and i used one of these in my last video um these are so so cool and glittery and fun and this is the color oh my gosh Where's the color? This is Flashing Opal. This one was Starlight. So Flashing Opal we're going to use today. I don't know how it's going to look with this neutral gloss, but we're going to give it a shot and see what happens. Probably would have helped if I opened this before I started. But, but yeah, I love these glosses because they're super glossy and they remind me so much of the Jeffree Star glosses and less than half the price. Um, they don't quite have the longevity of the Jeffree gloss, so I will say that much because I do love Jeffree Star cosmetics as well. Um, but they're really, really pretty. And then another one I have here is by Morphe. This is, I think, 8 inches. This is from the Morphe X Saweetie palette. So these two together I think are going to be really bomb. So I'm actually going to go in with a little of this first. And these have a little bit more color, as you can see. I'm just going to use my finger to kind of disperse that. So that'll give it like a little hint of that purple. And then, of course, going in with the really pretty holographic topper. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so I definitely want to keep with this kind of celestial fun look that we have. So I'm going to grab this 8S Stellar Impact Highlighter Palette from Morphe, which has a lot of really fun colors here. And I want to kind of work with these two here and kind of mesh them together just to create a kind of custom highlighted effect. So I'm going to grab Ultraviolet and Aurora, um, two opposite like ends of the spectrum because ultraviolet is blue based and aurora has pink warmth in it but i think mixing the two might look really cool all right so before i go ahead and put lashes on i want to go ahead and finish my skin off with some luminous setting mist from morphe yeah, let me go get my lashes on Okay, guys, so this is the finished look. Hey, I love it. Um, lashes are courtesy of Trinity Lash Co. These are the color Shmoney, which I love, love, love. This is probably backwards, though. I didn't think about that. But anyway, Trinity Lash Co. is the company, and it's actually a friend of mine that I met in my travels, and she has some really, really incredible lashes. They're super, super comfortable, um, awesome flex band very lightweight. These are, you know, very 3D multidimensional, but I love, love, love it. Oh my gosh, I forgot to do one thing, you guys. This is what happens lately. I'm so scatterbrained all the time because I just feel like I'm so out of my element lately. But I picked up this really cute LA Girl um, Shockwave Neon Eyeliner, and this is in the color, hold on, Vivid vivid one vivid i don't know it's purple it's cute i wanted to use this in my waterline let me do this real quick before i forget Ooh, okay honey I'm, like forgetting things i'm old this is what happens at 35 you just get this crazy like forgetful brain but anyway i wanted to use that because in the look that i had done on my instagram i had actually done white coconut liner from morphe let me just fix this lash real quick guys because bugging me but anyway, um, I wanted to try this liner and I love it. It just definitely gives it a different kind of vibe. It keeps it a little bit more smoky, but I love it because it offsets the green that's in my eyes. Um, and if you're a green eyed girl, you know, purple is one of your best friends. Um, lash applicator is Tartiste. I love this stuff. Um, 
yeah, what else to say? I mean, that's really it. I am living for this look. Love, love, love the Anastasia Pro Palettes. I just ordered the blue one. It's the only one I didn't have, but I even have the minis. I should probably do one with like the little cherry palette. But yeah, love, love, love them. Love these little LA Girl products. Um, found them at Target. All these like little holographic fun colors. I know it's impossible for us to get to a festival right now and live music in general which sucks but we can still have fun and we can still be loud and colorful and enjoy ourselves because why not um, my kids know I'm crazy and I'm loud and I'm big and that's it okay so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this look if you have any questions comment down below just comment say hi um yeah reach out my social media is linked and i will also um link products because i haven't been doing that i need to get back to telling you guys what i'm putting on my face um final thoughts with becca i can't give you a super final thought because i like to wear the foundation for a little bit of time so maybe i'll do one of those where i like check in and let you guys know how it goes but so far i really really like the finish um for brows today i don't know if i told you guys that i use the anastasia scratch that uh so yeah for brows today use the anastasia brow definer in the color dark brown i really really love this this is the wider tipped um brow pencil but i like it because i do have pretty sparse brows but it still gives a natural finish because i don't like my brows to be too thick and um sharpie like yeah just not for me Again, shmoney is the lash. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And until next time, I'll see you guys again really soon.